Hey there, welcome back. This video is all about creating a database for payload and setting up file storage for payload. Those are pretty much the two requirements that have to be in place in order for you to run payload successfully. Now, file storage in and of itself is optional. You can, in theory, and payload uses this by default, use the local file system to store files. So payload will just create, for example, for your media collection, it will create a media folder and in that folder it will place all the files. Now this works if you're on a local host in development or whatever, but as soon as you deploy it, you will run into issues. For example, on Vercel, you can't just access the, the local file system or rather it won't be persistent. That's why you need an external place to file your stores, to, to store your files. After we've set up those two things, we are then going to just quickly run through the payload version three setup guide and basically just set up our project. A bit of theory before we start. We have two database options. The first one is MongoDB. The second one is Postgres. There will be more options in the future, but for now we are going to choose MongoDB. For MongoDB, we have a lot of options, obviously. Um, one of them, the most prominent one is MongoDB Atlas. They have a great free tier, which provides you 500, 512 megabytes of storage. And MongoDB Atlas has nice additional features like backups, for example, or Atlas search, which is a full text search that you can use to just query your documents with fuzzy matching and a lot of advanced stuff. You could also deploy MongoDB, for example, on Coolify. We are planning to release a video on that pretty soon. It will be around the same cost as the cheapest paid Atlas plan, which is $9. However, if you get a VPS on $9, for $9, for example, on Hetzner, you get a nice machine. Um, it will have more performance. It will be a dedicated server. You will have a lot more storage but obviously you won't have this Atlas full text search. Now there are third parties that can provide you with, you know, search capabilities. There's even a payload plugin that helps you with search that won't have any fuzzy matching, but it can definitely optimize your search and it will be enough for, you know, most simpler cases, CMS systems, etc. You can also choose to use Postgres as a database. Now, one of the options, for example, is Superbase. They also have a great free tier uh, and provide you with 500 megabytes of free storage. There's also Vercel. Now, this is really super easy to use and set up. There is a video on the official Payload YouTube channel that shows you how you can go through the setup guide. By the way, there's also a setup guide with Superbase on there. The thing with Vercel is it's super easy to use but can get pretty expensive as soon as you have a bit more volume in the long term. So choose wisely. Now, in regards to file storage, the most prominent one is definitely the S3 protocol. You can get that from your local barbershop. I don't know. You can get it from anywhere. You can get it from AWS. You will get five gigabytes for free. You can also get it from Linode, which is a lot easier to use in my opinion than AWS itself but it is $5 a month with 250 gigabytes included. By the way, no guarantee on that prices whatsoever. That's just what I found might not be super up to date. There's also Superbase, which gives you one gigabyte for free and it's very easy to set up. Then you could use the Vercel blob storage, which is again, very, very easy to use, but it's expensive for larger volumes. Now it's also still in beta, so we don't quite know about the pricing, how this will change, but I expect it to be quite pricey. So it might be okay if you just want to store a few megabytes, like a few images or something, then it's super easy to set up. Um, but for anything larger, it's probably going to be quite expensive. Then there's also Bunny CDN, which is one of our favorites to use. We love this service. It's ridiculously cheap, it's super fast. And the big advantage is that it's actually a CDN. So if you upload something there, like an image, it actually, you can you can select the storage zone and you can also select the delivery 
zones, which means you can basically distribute it around the globe. And no matter where you access the website from, for example, it will just load stuff uh, from the nearest server. Now, Vercel does this as well with images. So in this case, you wouldn't need the bunny CDN. However, with videos, Vercel doesn't optimize them. So for if you want to you know, implement videos on your website in a background or something, and you don't want to load them from YouTube, but directly from the content management system, it might be a very wise choice to use bunny CDN. Now, the thing with that is there is no official plugin yet. Um, we developed a you know, very rough prototype internally for ourselves, which works, but we still need to publish it officially and maybe it will turn into an official plugin, but that's just for the future. So for our project, we're going to choose MongoDB Atlas for the database and Superbase for the S3 storage. So let's start with setting up our MongoDB Atlas database. I already have a active organization and an account on MongoDB Atlas. You can just sign up for free. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call it um, website tutorial v3. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to click on next. Now it will create the project itself. The project in and of itself is just a container for multiple clusters that you can create within a project. Since this is, like I said, we're, we're using the free plan, you can only create one single cluster, which we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to say M0 and per project, you can only create one of those free clusters. I'm just going to keep the name, going to choose AWS as the provider, going to use Frankfurt and create the deployment. Now this might take a little bit, but you can already see they help you create a database user, etc. Now I'm just going to click on create database user. We're not going to use actually this, this user, but we're going to make it a little bit more advanced. So if I click on choose a connection method, I'm going to click on drivers and this will give me my MongoDB connection string that I'm going to copy and keep for later. So I'm just pasting it into a note document. All right, so I'm going to click on done. Now by default, MongoDB will create a database user that has pretty much admin rights. So as you can see, it's, it's an Atlas admin. Now, I don't really feel comfortable with that. I would rather have my project, so the, the, the website backend, only have access to its specific database within the cluster, and it can only read and write to that database and it can't do anything else. In order to build this, I'll have to create a custom role. So if I click on create, I'm going just I'm just going to name it the same thing as the project. So website tutorial v3. I'm going to select database actions and roles. And now I have to specify the database name that this um, role should have access to basically. I'm planning to call the database exactly the same website tutorial v3. I'm going to create this custom role. And now I will add a database user that has this custom role. I'm going to name it, you know, my user, or I can also call it website tutorial v3. I'm going to auto generate a secure password and just copy it straight away and paste it into my notes. Don't try to hack it. I will update it obviously after recalling those tutorials. And instead of adding a built-in rule, I'm going to create a custom role. I'm going to select website tutorial v3. That means that this user now only has access to this specific database. So I'm not going to store the password. I'm going to delete the default admin user. And the last thing that I'm going to set up here is under network access, add IP address, and I'm going to allow access from anywhere. Now we need to do this because we don't have a static IP from deployment services like Vercel. If you have a 
you know, custom VPS, you're just deploying it on your own server and you know the IP address, just put it in here that will whitelist this IP address and only this server can access it. Otherwise, um, the access will be blocked. Now, this is obviously very handy because no matter, you know, from where I'm accessing the database in the local host as well, it won't be blocked. Otherwise, you will always just have to whitelist your own IP. I'm going to click on confirm and I just have to remove the old database here. So I'm going to delete this one. All right. And now we should be ready to go. If we go back into our notes, we have our link here. It actually just, yeah, it shouldn't have done that. This is a zero. So I need to paste this password basically after the username. So it's here. And instead of the admin username, I will have to specify the new username, which is website tutorial v3. And then after the mongodb.net, I have to specify my database that it will access. So I'm going to say website tutorial v3. Now this is our connection string that we can access from our payload project that will store our data. Let's continue setting up our file storage. I'm in my Superbase dashboard. I already created an account. I'm going to click on create new project in my own organization. I'm going to name it Websites Tutorial version 3, v3. Now I have to set a database password. I'm going to click on generate password. I'm going to copy it, paste it in here. So file storage. And for the region, I'm going to choose Frankfurt again, choose the region that is closest to you. And I'm creating a new project. This will take around one or two minutes. After it's completely set up, I'm going into project settings, storage, and under S3 connection, I can copy my endpoint, which I'm going to paste in here. And I can also copy the region. Now, the only thing left we need to do is create an access key. By accident, I just created one. I'm going to show you how to do it. I click on new access key, um, payload two in this case, that's just a label. And I'm going to copy the access key ID in here and the secret access key. Now, please keep those credentials secure. They can be used to access everything, your data, your files. Um, like I said, don't just put it into a notes document. All right, apart from that, we're basically set and can now start our project setup. Now I've already gone ahead and created a, just a normal GitHub repository and I've cloned it onto my machine. It's called Website Tutorial V3. The only thing that we have to do is type npx create payload app at beta. I'm going to click enter. Now I have to choose my project name. I'm going to call it website tutorial v3. I'm going to choose a blank project template, MongoDB as a database. And here I can paste in my MongoDB connection string. So I'm going to remove this one. And instead I'm going to copy and paste in this connection string. Now this will install all dependencies. Depending on your computer, it might take one or two minutes. And as soon as that is done, it should have installed everything into a sub directory here. Now, since this is my, my GitHub repository, I just install it here. What you can do is just select all files, move it into the root directory and delete this nested one. And now you have everything in your root folder ready to go. If we check out our project, we already have two collections in there, media.ts and users.ts. Now we are going to use media as our primary upload collection. And as you can see, upload is already set to true. You could in theory create multiple upload collections for you know images, videos separately. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, 
we're just going to create one media collection, which will be enough for most use cases if you're creating a website. Now, in order to link payload to our S3 bucket, we need to install a plugin. So I'm opening up a new terminal. I'm going to say pnpm install at payload CMS storage S3. As soon as this is installed, I will go to my payload config file and under plugins here, I'm going to paste in, oh, sorry, it's already double. I'm going to paste in the S3 storage plugin. Now you can get this from the official um, documentation on, on NPM or on, on GitHub, this code snippet, but I'm going to put it somewhere in the description as well. We just need to import S3 storage from the plugin. And now here is what we can set. We can set it for different collections. In our case, I'm going to set it for our media collection. You can do it dynamically. I'm just going to hard code the slug. Now, if you want a prefix, which I do, then I'm just going to add this as the prop for media. This will just make the bucket store all of our media elements in slash media. This is very handy if you have, like I said, multiple upload collections and you want to um, distinguish between your uploaded images, files, whatever. You will have slash image, slash files, slash documents. Now, what we need to do is add those four environment variables so that it can actually access the bucket. So I'm going to say S3 bucket and the name is the project name in Superbase if I'm not, if I'm correct. So S3 access key, I'm just copying the names, secret access key. region and we also need to add s3 endpoint since we're not using the default aws s3 now what we need to do is copy the endpoint paste it in here region is eu central one the key id is this one and the secret access key is this one here. Now we only need to extend our config, say endpoint process.env.s3 endpoint. One last thing you have to add to make it work with Superbase is you have to force path styles. So set fourth path style to true, and this will hook up our storage to S3 to store files here. Let's just quickly test this out by running npm run dev. This will start up our dev server on localhost 3001 because my port 3000 is blocked. So let's just check it out real quick. Um, over here. Obviously the index page will be empty because this is where our website will live. I'll have to access admin and it should now prompt me to create a first user since the database is currently empty. While you're in beta, you might get those mismatching dependency errors. In our case, we're currently on version 68 of our beta and the plugin cloud storage is 29. That's just because PNPM installs all the versions. Um, so let me just check out our package.json file. Here you can see and I'm just going to replace it with the beta flag. I'm going to say pmpm install, or let's say pmpm update, sorry. And this should download the newest version and should resolve the dependency conflict. After it has reloaded, we're now prompted with the welcome screen to create a first user. I'm going to create one real quick. And now we should have access to our admin panel. So let's try to upload a media file just to test it, I'm going to say, select a file, 
And I'm just going to upload a random image from Unsplash. I'm going to give it alt, beautiful scenery. Obviously not a great alt text, but anyways, I'm going to click on save. It's giving us an error, so something didn't work out. Let's check what the issue is. Bucket not found. All right, so it turns out it's not a naming issue. I just forgot to actually create the bucket. We have the credentials, even though we didn't create a bucket yet. So let's go back to Superbase real quick. Click on dashboard, go into our project. And on the left side on storage, I have to click on new bucket. I can give it a name. I'm going to call it website tutorial v3. I could also choose to make it a public bucket. That way I can disable the payload access control. So what I can do, just let me quickly show it to you. I can say here, uh, disable payload access control. And that way it won't return a URL that leads to the payload server, but it will return a URL that leads to the S3 storage directly. This is a lot faster, but obviously you can't enforce payload access control doing this. It might make sense though for media documents, which are public anyways. I'm not going to do this for now. So I will just create a standard bucket website tutorial v3, click on save. Now our bucket is here. If I go back and again, click on save, it's submitting and it should now be successfully created. We check our bucket here. We find our media folder and in that we have our image. All right, this will be it for today's video. In the next video, we are going to go above the basic setup and start building our dynamic pages. If you do have any questions or feedback, please let us know in the comments below. And apart from that, take care and see you in the next video.